Welcome back. In this video, we're going to finish our painting for our fantasy creature ocarina. Um, you can see in this other ocarina, what I've done is I've used the base color to kind of paint the main body shape, and then I've used other colors like the turquoise here, and the blue there, and the black, and the orange, and the white to kind of enhance the final details. Mostly enhance the impressed um, designs, the incised lines, and any other pieces that would, you know, create the uh, the overall concept of the design and finish the idea of the whole creature or animal. So with that in mind, we're going to think of what we can do to enhance this one, uh, maybe taking a different color and putting it into these little triangular scale marks, finishing off the eye, perhaps making some of this incised line design here a little bit more intricate maybe putting some more incised or colors onto the scales here or the the little um uh little nubbins what are these called little scales there um again while you're doing this make sure that you're careful of your holes your your pitch holes your sound hole and your um blow hole down here if there's any places you missed like i as moving fast in the video missed a couple places here um, I'll have to go back over those make sure they're nice and neatly um, finished up so that there's no problem with with unfinished clay uh, things you're gonna need you're gonna need a regular brush maybe a detail brush for the smaller pieces so I'll put detail brushes out on the counter for you if you need them paper towel to blot your brushes on clean water dirty water cup little bitty water cup for yourself make sure of course you wash your brush out really really well um, in your little water cup before you um, change colors because you don't want to ruin um, your one of the colors remember our glaze box um, has a bunch of glazes in them and the glazes look something like this they're screw off caps so as you screw them off be careful so you don't dribble all over the place and when you're done make sure you screw the caps on really well so that they don't dribble out all over the inside of the glaze box um, the yellow and the white have a tendency to settle so those ones you might have to stir up um, but other than that they should they, they should work out well so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be uh, just starting and gonna be working on the pattern um, here these are the kind of things that I want you to be thinking about while you work on your design. For your second layer of underglaze, you're gonna be working on small details. You're gonna be enhancing the impressed pattern, enhancing the incised lines, and enhancing the overall concept of your design and creature. And kind of like adding those things on, you know, little white of the eyes, the extra details on the back, those sort of things. So, as we get started here, um, I'm gonna just start with my little teeny brush, my little detail brush. I'm gonna use some yellow and I'm gonna kind of poke it into the bottoms of these little designs and you can kind of see how I just let the glaze dribble in there so that I'm not over painting it and of course I'm being as careful as possible to make it look nice and neat I don't want it to be sloppy especially not at this stage I don't want sloppiness because that'll just ruin the whole effect of the process, right? We've done a lot of work on this to make sure that everything works out really nicely, so we want to make sure to do a really neat job and enhance our design rather than ruin it. And your base color should do a pretty nice job of, you know, blending in, coming through. If you want it to, you know, fall in the background, you can make your colors thicker. Um, you may, I mean, make your underglazes thicker. If you want them to show through a little bit, you can make your underglazes thinner. Uh, either way, that's going to work for you. Make your artistic choices based on what you want your final product to look like. Um, 
work carefully. Remember one of the things I always say that people will notice sloppiness first. The very first thing people will see about your artwork is how neatly you did it. You could have the best sounding, most in tune ocarina there ever was in the whole wide world, but if you do a sloppy, lousy job on painting it, um, you're going to run into trouble just because people won't even look at it. They'll be like, eh, that guy, that person, whoever it is, did a sloppy job on the painting. Eh, I don't even want to look at the rest because if they did a sloppy job on the painting, the rest of it's probably lousy too. So make sure that you've done all this work, you've done all this neat, detail, thoughtful stuff. Make sure that at this last juncture here, you do a nice, neat job. And if you uh, accidentally dribble or get some paint or underglaze where you don't intend to, uh, you can always go back with your original color and fill over or repaint to make the textures and designs look right. Okay, um, it will probably take about a day or two to do this in class so that everyone can have enough time to do a nice neat job that they want to need to. You're going to be graded separately on your you know, making of the ocarina skills, uh, you're adding on of the clay and you're painting and you're glazing. It's all separately graded. So if you can, you know, if you did really bad on one other part, maybe this is your chance to catch up and, and get a better overall grade by doing a really nice job of painting. Okay. And of course, do nice no matter what. Do a good job no matter what. Always do your best work make sure that you're doing good work. Of course be very careful with your um, ocarina as well because um, you don't want to break it at this point. It's very dry, it's very fragile you don't want it to get ruined or broken at this point. That would be a tragedy. So you really do want to be careful and not have your ocarina break. At this point, Mr. Lundgren, you can probably fast forward this side of the details. 